Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm back here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that are coming up for sale in their April 2015 premiere auction. And I found two in the catalog here that are kind of cool and extremely unusual. These are both Japanese World War II pistols that aren't Nambus. So this is a Sugiura uh, Shiki pistol and this is an Inagaki Shiki pistol. And I figured we should take a closer look at these because it's extremely uncommon to find either of them. Uh, now the Sugira is the simpler of the two or the, the less unusual. Um, about 6,000 of these were made, depending on who you read, um, and they are basically a copy of the Colt 1903. Uh, they were made in China and uh, they actually were made in both 25 and 32 caliber and production in China most likely continued after the Japanese, uh, after the end of the war when the Japanese left. The Inagaki is significantly rarer, only about 500 of these were ever manufactured, they're all in 32 auto, and uh, l less than a dozen of them are known to still exist today. So it's very cool to get a closer look at that one. And it's got, it's a kind of unusual proprietary interesting design. Why don't I bring the camera back and let's take a closer look at both of these guys. All right, so first the Sugira. Um, as I said, these were made in China, um, about 6,000 of them in total were made. This is number 4248, so it's going to be a good way through production. It's a copy of the Colt 1903, uh, a few differences to it, some subtle things like the, uh, the profile of the back strap here is a little different. There is no grip safety. It does have a manual safety, and in fact, the manual safety on this is a good bit larger than on the original Colt, which is kind of nice. Um, other than that, pretty much identical in design. You can see right back here we have this five-pointed star which indicates uh, the Manchurian factory where it was made, and another one up here on the slide. Um, yeah, here's a, a good example of some of the, the rather cruder work that was done on this. Uh, Japanese pistols typically are of excellent manufacture. This was clearly done by a Chinese factory under Japanese supervision, and frankly, Given the serial number on this one, this particular example may well have been manufactured after the Japanese had left. Uh, if you look at the end of these pins, they're also pretty crudely done there. So mechanically, this is a straight blowback pistol, being a copy of the Colt 1903. It has a barrel that is fixed in place when you're firing, but can be rotated about 90 degrees to remove the barrel and then the slide. Now, like the Colt, we actually have a second safety catch here that locks the slide in the correct position to remove the barrel. And on this one, right, right up here, you can see that there's a little mark on the slide. That shows you where the slide needs to be in order to rotate the barrel. So we can rotate it like that, remove the safety, and then the whole thing comes forward. So I'm not gonna take it apart any farther than that, but you get the idea. At this point, the slide would, it's catching on something, but the slide would come off the front, barrel comes out, your recoil spring is underneath here, and you're in good shape. So we pull that back to the appropriate location, rotate the barrel back into place, and we're ready to go. Uh, heel magazine release, like the Colt. We have an eight round magazine in 32 auto. These pistols were all used in China, they were used I should point out, so I want to point out this is also a number matching magazine, which is pretty cool, 248, a regular serial number being 4248. Now because of the commonality of 32 auto in China, uh, the Japanese pistols that were in 32 were typically sent to China and used there uh, as compared to their 8mm Nambu pistols, which were used extensively in, and also in the Pacific. So, let's take a closer look at the other one. All right, so this somewhat ugly duckling of a pistol is the Inagaki Shiki. These were manufactured by a name, man named Iwakichi Inagaki. Uh, he actually, he retired from the, uh, the Koichikawa arsenal in Tokyo where he had been involved in manufacture of artillery. He retired there in 1924 and opened a gun shop where he manufactured sporting arms, rifles and shotguns mostly. Uh, when war got serious for Japan in 1936, 1937, he started working on his pistol design. And 
while these went to army trials in 1941, it appears that even before then he had sold a number of them to the, uh, the Japanese Air Force, because, and, and they were being used as airmen's pistols. Uh, in 1941, he was able to get a contract for these uh, from the army. He sold about 500 of them to the Japanese Imperial Army. Um, in 1943, production of these ceased. These were in 32 automatic, um, again, an eight-round magazine. And the reason they stopped production was to change over to a version in 8-millimeter Nambu uh, for caliber consistency with the rest of Japan's pistols. The problem was his 8-millimeter Nambu gun didn't really work well, and uh, the, the whole thing fell apart at that point. So all, the only ones that ended up being made were the original 500 in 32 of which this is one of less than a dozen known to still exist. Now, this is also straight blowback. So, there's our slide. We have a safety on this side. Uh, it's interesting in that typically you would expect to put the safety lever onto the marking that you want. Uh, we have an S and an F, which does suggest that he also intended to sell these commercially. There's the F. In this case, uh, this is the fire position. This is the safe position. So instead of putting the, the lever over the, the indicator you want, in this case, you hide the one that you don't want. So uh, on safe, the slide cannot be fully retracted. It only comes back this far. If I switch this to fire, I can now retract the slide fully. Just a simple blowback, but the way it disassembles is pretty cool. We take our trigger guard here, which you can see has a cutout on this side but not on that side. So we take that, it's got a little bit of tension on it, and we rotate it out like so. And then pull the trigger guard out, and at that point, the slide and barrel just comes right off the front. So, let's see here. Our barrel is a separate component right here. This circle is what the trigger guard locks into, just like this, which holds it in place. Because the barrel's on there, it prevents the slide from going forward off the gun. And then this block on the frame interacts with this right there, which is connected to a pair of dual small recoil springs. So when the slide is on, that, that block in the frame forces the recoil springs to compress when the slide goes back. There is a very short section with a couple of dovetailed rails right there that hold the front of the slide in position. We have a pretty typical firing pin, spring loaded, right there. See that working? And it is a hammer fired gun. So it's a shrouded hammer back here. It's neat to see we do have the Japanese naval emblem here, the, the circled anchor indicating naval acceptance and use. That's a bit unusual and pretty cool to see. So our barrel is number matching. It's 160, as is the rest of the gun. And that, that's all there is to it for this barrel. Really, a pretty slick, pretty slick little design. So to reassemble, the barrel sits right there in the frame. This drops on. So our rails only engage that first boy, three quarters of an inch or so. That goes right there. Pull the slide back a bit. We can actually see the barrel line up right there. Drop our trigger guard in. And then press down and rotate it home. Just like that. Heel magazine release, and actually a very stiff fitting magazine in this particular example. So there you have it, one Inagaki Shiki. Well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, learned something about a couple of pistols you may not have been familiar with before. Uh, if you would like to own either one of these, they are both coming up for auction at Rock Island's April 2015 auction. So I have links below to the, the lot pages for both of them. So you can take a look at their high-res pictures, their catalog descriptions, and uh, have everything you need on their website to set up uh, an account online and place a bid or come down here to Rock Island to a bid in person. Thanks for watching.